higher. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Jesus, we lift you, we adore you, we love you. For you have the name that is above every name. Come on, clap your hands, church. Say, we come to lift your name up higher.
depression run out of here. Jesus. Bigger than your biggest problem. Oh, Jesus. Greater than your greatest situation. Jesus. 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 Lift him up. Adore him. Extol him. Exalt him. Jesus. Jesus. One name. One king. One name. One king. One Lord. One faith. One message. It's in the name. 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 him and given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father it says that that things on earth things beneath the earth and things in the heavenly realm. In other words, Jesus dominates it all. And as we were lifting his name up, I saw stuff breaking. I, I literally saw dimensions breaking. I, I literally saw glass shattering. And I just want us to take about 15 seconds and get all of our stuff. Because I feel like when we lifted his name up, heaven opened. So just think about 10, 15 seconds. Come on, pray. Come on, call the thing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody call him. Lift him. Call him. Lift him. Call him. Like you know him. Call him. Like you know him. Call him. Like you deliver you. Call him. Like you met you. When you were at him. about tonight and about what we wanted God to do. I was back with the instructors, brilliant facilitators of Wednesday school, and we, we gathered around to pray as we do. And we asked for different things every week. Yes, we have studied and prepared, and, and the teaching and the edification is brilliant and master. Have you been blessed? And tonight, as we prayed, we had an upper room experience. And we asked the Holy Spirit to do something unusual. That there would be an unusual measure of His grace in every classroom. So we're going to save some of this glory for the classroom. So the, anybody grateful to be in God's house tonight? Hallelujah. 
God bless you. We want to also acknowledge those who are in the house via technology. Can you help me salute all of our online streamers, our e-church? Wednesday school is huge. It's, it's global. It's international. We're being built up and edified and and we are so blessed tonight to have the visionary of this movement and the visionary of Wednesday School. Our own Bishop T.D. Jakes is here in the house. Can we honor and salute him and celebrate him? Thank you so much, sir, for, for all of the opportunities that you put before us to grow and be built up and edified. That's Ephesians 4, that, that we might, for the equipping of the saints. And we're so grateful for leadership that is serious about equipping. And that's what Wednesday School is about. I'm so excited for the tracks that are tonight. You can be seated if you want to. We know we have five tracks that we, that we build on and build in and build through each week. We have the Bible and money track and... We have the Life of Christ track, and we've got yes. the Worship track, and the Holy Spirit track, Ministry in the Marketplace, and, and we've just got incredible things that God is going to do in each one tonight, and I'm so excited. And we thank God for, for Wednesday School, and we're, this is, wow, we're the second to the last week of it. I'm starting to miss it already, and... But we've been blessed and built up and edified. But I got a funny feeling that this is not going to be a one-off. If we did it more than just one time, would that would you? <laughs> I got a funny feeling that maybe, maybe it'll come back around. But in addition to that, there's so many opportunities for us to be built up and edified. The International Leadership Summit is literally right around the corner right here in Dallas, Texas. It's in March. And let me tell you something. March is going to be here before you know. Look how quickly this year has gone by. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, reserve your seat for this meeting. We're going to have incredible speakers, brilliant people that will teach and impart and educate and build you a lot of the things, literally keys that you need to open doors that you've been praying about, I believe, are going to be handed out and passed out in this conference. Go to ILS.org. Phenomenal speakers, entrepreneurs, and yes, plenty of pastors, but business people and philanthropists, people that you know, our very own Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts is going to be teaching, and, and you know, she's multidimensional like her father, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, Pastor Keon is going to be speaking as well, and he's doing incredible things in Houston and around the world. John Hope Bryant, who is brilliant, philanthropist and CEO, and, and literally global impact. Pastor Dale Bronner, uh, A.R. Bernard, so many people, too many to name. This is just a few. I just want you in the room. This is the type of ministry that anything that we do, you might as well plan on being there. Come on, somebody. If you, if you are committed to growth, then whatever we put up, we're not just putting up stuff to do it. We're praying and we're asking God, what do the people need for the times that we are in? We're serious about it and we've a lot of prayer, time, and resources to facilitate those environments. You've got to make up your mind that anything they do, I'm showing up. And then this Friday, the very last Hey You, with Pastor Sarah and First Lady Sarita, and you can bring your children. It's going to be this Friday at 7 o'clock here at the church. You don't want to miss it. Bring your, your daughters. Bring your parents. It's going to be amazing. It's the last one of the year, and it's going to be a real, real big blessing. Now, speaking of building, do I have any kingdom builders in here tonight? You just, you believe in building the kingdom. I'm thinking about Matthew 6, 33, when, when Jesus is teaching, and he says, take no thought about what you're going to eat or what you're gonna drink or what you're gonna wear or what you're gonna put on. He says, take no thought. In other words, he said, don't, don't even worry about that. And then he says, if, is not life not more than that? Isn't life more than that? To be consumed with, with taking care of yourself. He said, look at the lilies of the field. You don't see them stressed out. You, you don't see birds walking around depressed. When was the last time you saw birds saying, oh, I just don't know how I'm gonna make it. I just don't know how I'm gonna... Even the birds get it. 
the birds recognize and understand that, that they have a provider. And so when we're free from worrying about things that God has already worked out, <laughs> Come on, somebody. There's somebody in here right now. You're worried about something that God has already worked out. You're wasting energy. And it could be energy spent towards your purpose and building the kingdom. He says, but do this. Let me tell you how to win. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things will be added unto you. And that's what we do every time we honor God with our tithe, every time we honor God in giving. We are seeking the kingdom and we are, it says, and his righteousness, being in alignment. Remember when Jesus was being baptized and they were like, no, you don't have to be baptized. You could. He said, no, no. He says, I have to in order to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, I need to be in alignment so that there's nothing hindering the flow of grace and goodness into my life. And then the father came back and the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In other words, he will not keep anything from me. Do I have any happiness?